So are you an Orthodox Greek? That's correct. And are most Greeks Orthodox Greeks? Yes, they are. So what's the difference between a normal Greek and an Orthodox Greek? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a big question? Well, I just, you know, explain it to me in layman's terms. Well, all the Greeks, they're Orthodox, let's put it this way. Okay. So that is not Greek and that is no Greek Orthodox. Got it. I'm Dawn O'Porter, I'm British but I'm living in New York and I'm fascinated by the amount of different religions here. All these different neighbourhoods that are dedicated to those religions and their food. I'm on my way to one of the oldest Greek Orthodox churches in the whole of America and I'm going to speak to a priest and he's going to teach me all about the Easter customs when it comes to food and what the food means in terms of Greek Orthodox religion. So I know that it's very similar to Roman Catholicism but there's obviously differences and I want to know what the differences are. What is this all about? So, a Greek festival in America is really just a celebration of Greek life and Greek culture mm -hmm. of the Greeks that surround some of these Orthodox churches. We're being approached. Well, we're being approached with an amazing type of Greek donut, otherwise called lukumadis. Oh my god. So it's flour, yeah, it's really good. sugar, and of course, and it's fried in some oil, and then they put cinnamon on top. So is this traditional Greek? This is very, very Greek. We call it Greek donuts <laughs> only because that's the way the Americans get to, get to learn it. Oh, I see. But it's called lukumadis. I'd love to taste some, thank you. You want to taste some of this one? Um, whatever's the best bit. Yeah. Okay, lovely, yeah, thank yeah, you. Okay. Tastes good, huh? Come on. Is that all I'm allowed? Right. No, you could take more. <laughs> <laughs> so why is the lamb so significant? Historically, religiously, Christ on the cross was considered the sacrificial lamb. Right. And so at, at Pascha, or as everyone else calls Easter, is that is the traditional meal of Pascha is lamb. That's good because it's really delicious. It's amazing. <laughs> it's definitely the highlight of everyone's uh, Easter meal. I do want to speak to you a lot more Good, about sorry. the religion and how food plays a part of that culture. So okay. should we go inside Let's go to in do the church. that? Okay, yeah. that's a good idea. Lent means that you fast for 40 days. Yes. And then talk me through the feast that you have when it's all over. Okay, so on Pascha, Easter, we have right after midnight services, the Divine Liturgy, we have this huge meal. And so the biggest thing that a lot of people do is have lamb, yeah. just like we saw outside. But you have your traditional, you know, your lamb, your salad, your rice pilaf, I mean, it's, it's the best food and it probably is the most awaited food for a Greek all year long. Tell me about this traditional Easter bread. Okay. It's called? Tsurekia. Tsurekia. Sorry, Tsureki in, in the singular. Tsureki. And this, and you, a lot of the times you see it maybe braided, it's a sweet bread. And this is a bread that is just offered. It has nothing, you don't see it in church, it's not blessed. But at the same time, it's something that's just traditional that coincides with every Easter meal and you'll see it during the Easter season. So right now, we just don't celebrate Easter on one day, we celebrate it for a period of 40 days. Think of it this way, you're preparing for a banquet and, and you're, you're, you're self-cleansing yourself. It's a journey, you're journeying, you're walking through Christ mm -hmm. and then you receive Holy Communion and then after you have that big Pascha meal, the lamb, the magiritsa, the, the feta cheese, oh. it, it's, it, it's that much rewarding. Got it. So it's worth it? It's worth it. So what do I do now to properly experience an Easter meal? Go find an authentic Greek restaurant, either here in New York City or go hit up Astoria. You're just telling me basically to go eat? I I'm telling you to go eat again. Okay. <laughs> I'm in Astoria, which is the Greek hub of New York City. So there's loads of Greek people here, loads of Greek restaurants, really, really Greek vibe. So I know I have to go to a Greek restaurant to find out how to make this traditional Greek Easter feast. But first of all, I'm going to go to a bakery and find out how to make the special bread. So everything in here 
was made in Greece. Everything, the, all the pr premises was made in Greece and everything on the racks was made in this store. We've collected uh, recipes out of people's homes in Greece. We want to keep them totally, totally authentic. Right. So we import what's needed to import to make these uh, cookies. Here's an example mm -hmm. of how precise we are. This is the mustakuluna. It's made with bikemezi, and bikemezi or musk, when they stomp the grapes to make wine in mm -hmm. Greece at the end of August, the beginning of September, the residue from the grape stomping is boiled for, um, or simmered for 24 hours, and the syrup to that is in these cookies. Right. Would you like to try I one? I would love to try one. I'm not going to leave here in this dress, am I? I don't think so. Mmm, <laughs> it's almost gingery. It's very, yes. It's so tasty. Well, talking of tradition, I came here specifically to learn how to make the Easter bread. Oh, would you like to see the kitchen? Yeah, I'd love to. Please, come on in. Here we're making what's called um, a Thessaloniki kukuludi. Kuludi means round, right. like a, a wreath. And here we're making the traditional Greek tsureki. I see. Oh, but it starts off very small. There's a lot going in, uh, uh, going into that dough and yeah. a lot going on. Firstly, when we make the dough, we put something in called mastika. Mastika is a, a gum resin that's found only on the island of Chios, Greece. It is ground and put into this tudek. It has a very distinct flavor. Please take some and just put it in your mouth. Just beware. It, it, it'll turn into some, a sort of a gum. Mmm. So almost gingery. Uh, yeah, it's a very distinct oh. flavor. I hope none of all your teeth are well intact. Mm. And then we also have something very unique in our tureki. It's called maklepi. So it's called luxurious bread. Yes, it is. I want to have a go at doing it, twisting oh. it. Well, be my guest. I'm really uncoordinated, so it probably won't uh, go very well, but I'll try. Poor. Shall we put an apron on you, Torrent? Yep, that's pretty good. Okay. Lovely. So Thank you, you so care. much. Dawn would love to partake in making of the tsureki. Yeah, I want to do what he does so effortlessly. Oh, it's so light, the dough. Yes. I wasn't expecting that at all. Okay. Okay, well, that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty, pretty good. good. So, don't tell me. Yes. I'm okay. going to see if I can remember. No, you take these two. Okay. And yeah. I do that. Yeah. And then I do that. No, no, no. That and then I do. Yes, yes. That and then I do. Yes. That and then I wow. do. Wow. Yes. That and then I do that <laughs> and then I do you that. Love. That and then I do the squishy end. Yes. Okay. I don't know what all the fuss is about. That's easy. Did I get the job? <laughs> I got the job. How long does that take to cook then? About a half hour. took me ages. But look, Whoa. look. It She's all another, excited. It needs another five minutes, but it looks awesome. <laughs> so what I've learned is that sweets are a massive part of being Greek. Also what I've learned is how to make bread from scratch, kind of. And also that that was the most Greek place I've ever been. Like everything in there, all the fixtures, the, the shelves, the baskets, everything was all from Greece. That's, that's seriously Greek. There's so many different parts of this Easter feast, which is how they break the fast that they've been doing for Lent. So now I've learned all about the sweets, and now I'm going to Yefsi, which is a restaurant on the Upper East Side, where I'm gonna learn how to make all the savory stuff. Lamb and potatoes, and just delicious loads of niceness. Hey, Don. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, good, nice Welcome. to meet you. Welcome, nice to meet you. How uh, are you? Too. Welcome. Very well, thank you. I brought Welcome. you this bread. Oh, great, thanks. I made it. Love it. Oh, you made it. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. It looks exactly like my, my grandmother's. Really? <laughs> well, that's because I've been doing it for years. Okay, so good, good. I'm an old pro. <laughs> Oh, All right. It's nice and warm in here. Welcome to my kitchen. Thank you so much. So what are we cooking? Uh, today we're going to do a Greek Easter dinner. So what's the first thing that we're going to do then? In this very traditional, we do the red eggs first. So I'm just going to take the paint, okay? And yeah. then just 
pour it in. When you make the red eggs, what's the main thing that it symbolizes? It symbolizes Jesus, the blood that it was dripping when they crucified him on the cross. And so when you eat them, do you say that? You say? It's like a little game that we play. Right. So after we dye the eggs and, you know, you're going to take one, I will take one, and then I will hit you and you hit me. So uh, when the egg breaks, if, if your egg breaks, and my egg stays solid, I mean, I'm the winner. Oh. So you go around the table, you do this, and you're supposed to be the, the lucky person of the of the year. But it's some people, they're cheating too. Oh, really? Oh yeah, they get, <laughs> it's a good story. They get, they get like a red egg, but it's like a wooden red egg. And so they, you don't know. Wooden egg? Yeah, so you don't know, I'm holding like this, and they say, okay, go ahead. Do you and cheat? They, no, I never cheat. Do you cheat? Sometimes. <laughs> So we're gonna do the eggs. So when does all this happen in the Easter period then? Is that Saturday night after Jesus uh, comes out from death, when right. he comes back from so death. So it's Saturday night before Easter Sunday? That's correct. And everyone's been fasting? Yes. And it's just the feast of all feasts? That's correct. And uh, you know. <laughs> I broke it. <laughs> That's yours. Okay, no! <laughs> so, are you ready to take the eggs out? I am, I am, that's my job. I always make the eggs match whatever outfit I'm wearing. <laughs> It's just something I've always done. So you want to play the game now? All right. Yeah? Yeah, let's play the okay. game. <laughs> you know what now says I got the wooden one, right? Don't you, if that's a wooden, <laughs> let me just let me just test your egg first. If no, no. You are the secret it's wooden my egg, egg seller. No, 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 you go ahead, hit me. Okay, hit. so what do we do? So I go Christos and Esti. Christos and Esti. And then you hit. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> you hit me hard. <laughs> Is that she the... destroyed my egg. That's because I, I won. <laughs> I told you that I'm going to hit again. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank if you want, we can do um, a little bit of a salad yes, that we get salad. at night. A okay? Greek salad? Uh, it's not a Greek salad. This le they call it maruli. Uh -huh. Maruli in Greek means uh, lettuce. I have my scallions and dill already here. So I take a bunch of this also. Mm -hmm. and then I have a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of oregano, some salt, you know, a good extra virgin olive oil, and then some uh, red wine vinegar. Mm -hmm. Then take uh, one piece of feta. I actually eat feta all the time. I think it's it, delicious, but I mean, it's really Greek. It is Greek. I mean, a, a lot of other countries, they do feta. Mm -hmm. it, it's only the Greeks that can call it feta. I mean, French, oh. they can call, they can do feta, or the Bulgarians, but they call it white cheese. They cannot call it feta. Like champagne if it's not from champagne. That's correct. Got it. Yeah. That olive oil smells so Good, gorgeous. Right? You can smell it, right? So. I think olive oil is one of my favorite flavors. And then, to finish this, we take the Kalamata and black olives. Is it always Kalamata olives? Yes, always. That's what I have. And then you put like four and this is your salad. That looks delicious. That is so tasty. I'm going to just stand here and eat this. <laughs> that is That's so a very healthy salad, actually. Mm. The olive oil is just so strong. Oh. And I love, <clears throat> I love the oregano. The oregano, yeah, it has mm. that nice uh, mountain smell. So yeah. it's, it's beautiful. I've never used it's it a in very, um, It's a very refreshing salad. Oregano is good for you too. I love that. I'm going to put it over there. I'll literally finish it. And then now I'm going to I have some uh, lame potatoes here. Oh. So we're going to do this. So what you're going to do now, mm. you take some salt, mm -hmm. you sprinkle the salt all over. Don't be shy. Put more. And this draws the moisture out of the meat, does it? Yeah, uh, then makes the meat also more, more flavorful. That's enough. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Got it. All right, so take the, some oregano again. So oregano, oregano is a key ingredient mm -hmm. then. Put some all over. Mm -hmm. And now some black pepper. A little bit on that side too. Okay, you good? Mm. All right. This is fresh thyme. Oh, yeah. All right, just, just yeah, just throw it all over the, the lamb. And then I also like to put some bay leaves. Mm -hmm. So just uh, dry bay leaves, just crush them over there. Good. Nice, good extra virgin olive oil. Lovely. Okay, just like this. Oh, that smell. And then, one cup, half cup actually of lemon juice. Yeah, just and what does give the it a little bit, do? a little bit more flavor. You know, cut the aroma from the lamb. Mix just it up. Mix just it be all careful. Up. Don't, don't. I'm just gonna don't yeah. splash it on your dress. Yeah, the, so food, <laughs> the food tastes much better when you put your hands in. It's like eating fish and chips in the yeah. UK with knife and fork. Doesn't taste so good. 
<laughs> so do you do everything with your hands then? Yeah, yeah there is a saying in, in, in Greek, we say Yasta hergiasu. Okay. It means uh, God bless your hands because the food is so delicious. That's why you want sometimes... So, so lucky hands. Uh, that's it, you stick your hands inside and that's why somehow the food gets more flavor. <laughs> so what I do also, I add some water there. This recipe is the best dinner party recipe okay, ever. Okay, that's what I do there. And then I'm gonna take a piece of aluminum foil, uh -huh. cover it, and we're gonna put it in the oven for about a uh, couple of hours. Oh, really? A long time? Slow long roasting? Time, uh, slow roasting, and then... What kind of temperature? Uh, about 350 degrees. Okay. We did the salad, the lamb is cooking in the oven, so we're pretty much ready for the Easter dinner. Okay, well, I'm ready. I'm starving. Good. You know, so usually what we do, I mean, you know, we Greeks sometimes, you know, it's, as soon as we see the food, we attack. So we don't even wait for the food or not. We oh. just grab it. So, you know, go ahead. That's why I put the nice little bone there. I love that. There. So you take, you okay. grab it there and then you just eat it. You know, just be careful from the, from the bay leaves and everything. Oh. So eat that and your potatoes and, you know. So I don't need a knife and fork for my potatoes? You need, a, you need a fork. Do I? <laughs> I'm really excited about the fact that I was allowed to eat with my hand. This is a clean fork if you want to try your mm. potatoes too. Mm -hmm. Okay. I imagine like having not eaten meat for 40 days coming in here. Uh, then you eat the lemon potatoes and oh. everything. So it's, uh, I guess you're in heaven. That's what they say, right? I am in heaven. Good. I think this might be the most delicious thing I've eaten in a long time. Uh, it's just absolutely. Thank you. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> It's like I haven't eaten for 40 days. Do you know what? No. I'm going to put Greek food in my top three favorite kinds of food. I think you have to. I love it. I'm not going to stop. I think there's kind of this awkward <laughs> moment where I'm supposed to stop eating and like have a chat, but that's not happening. Thank you so much for teaching uh, me. I finished my ears as well since yeah. you finished your life. <laughs> you get drunk, I'll get fat. I spent the whole day learning about Greek Orthodox religion, and what I found out is actually really interesting. There's a lot of food involved in the religion. I also discovered that they love sweets. There's a lot of sweets, a lot of pastry, and a lot of sugar. I also learned that the lamb, the sacrificial lamb, is possibly the tastiest thing I have ever eaten. I'm gonna be salivating about that lamb for weeks and weeks and weeks. I've gotta find some Greek friends so I can go to some Greek Easters. That's what I've gotta do. Now I feel like I need to just go and lie on my back and let my big fat belly flop to the side and just deal with the fact that I've eaten constantly all day. <coughs> Let's pick a nice healthy <laughs> There are a couple of rules that apply to halal. One, the, the prayer, but prior to that, it's important that you know, one animal doesn't see another one being slaughtered. Really? It's important never to sharpen your knife in the sight of, a, of an animal. This is all perfect.